Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today we're filming on a brand new location with my old friend Fortuna. I don't know if you guys remember her, but this was a rescue boa we got into an, out of a house as a baby that was crawling on somebody's shower turn on valve. This is her. She is in shed right now, but uh, this location is going to be the Olympus boa basement. We're going to do some boa work. It's at a separate location from our house. So I do like to keep my boas and pythons separate. So Kurt's going to be doing most of the work with the boas. So you do notice this room is extremely short, uh, but that'll be okay because he'll fit in and he will have to worry about bumping his head like I do. But uh, this girl needs a cage upgrade. So what we're going to do, <laughs> see it's not really that bad. Actually pretty good space in here for a boa basement. We have Anthony Ware with us today who is going to be putting together a cage for this big old girl here. How long do you think she is, Anthony? Have you uh, worked with over eight. Yeah, she's probably a good 20 pounds at least. Yeah, 20, She actually 25. probably needs to lose a little bit of weight. We kind of spoil her, but we'll probably put her on a little bit of a diet because I do notice your tail getting just a little thick, huh, girly? But uh, she's been with us a long time. She deserves to be spoiled because you can imagine it's just a little bitty baby red tail stuck in a house in Kansas. Like, uh, in nobody even knew home? she was there. No, somebody was living there. And, like, it was just in there. Wow. And he went into a shower. And we got the call, you know. And I got this call. Hey, there's a bow in the house. And I'm like, whatever. So the wife and I are going out there. And we're talking about what is it really, you know. You're like, <laughs> you know, it's probably a bull snake or something like that. And we get there. I'm like, oh, holy shit, that's actually a little boa constrictor, you know. Who would have thought? So she's been in Kurt's care pretty much since then. Kurt was actually living in our house at that time. And it was living in his bedroom where he moved in shortly after. I can't remember now. And uh, then he took her with him whenever he got his own place. And then when he moved again to this house recently, he brought her along and it had space for us to do boas. So that's what we're going to be doing. But it's completely outgrown this cage. So I appreciate you coming down here, putting something together for us. So give you guys a chance to see his work, see if it's a cage you want. Uh, he's going to tell you all about him while he puts them together. He's already got all the panels made. So I'm going to get out of the way and let him do it. So what we use for our material is... Just expanded PVC, same as most of you get your uh, rack systems made out of. And what I've done is I've taken a plunge router and I've routered the groove out for the side panels, front and back panel. Um, everything will fit neatly in there and then a top cap will go on. We'll start to put it together and you'll see as we go here that it's, it doesn't take all that long and it's certainly not difficult. When we ship these, they'll come, they should come flat packed to you to assemble with instructions. It's not difficult. The panels will be labeled. Um, I don't think that anybody could really mess it up unless they don't know how to put a screw in. That's pretty much as, as simple as it gets. So I'm going to get started here and you all can see as I go. All right, so on each of these panels, you're going to have aside that it has a plastic covering it's protective um, keeps from getting scratches when you lay the pieces together or if there's any particulate left from the manufacturing of of the pieces um, when you get it the side that has it should be the side that faces out or as far as the back panel it will be specifically labeled whether i have it set up to go in or out and it'll depend on which enclosure you get because the 12 millimeter material is a little thinner and sometimes it's easier to scar than the 19 millimeter. And you can see the sturdiness of the material. Um, it doesn't go anywhere. So with this piece being aside, it really doesn't matter where it goes because both sides of it look exactly as it is and the panels just slide right down in there we go to seat down in the back down there if you would D. Back, 
this is the back piece. This is where we place our ventilation. Uh, sometimes when the, right, when the protective layer is still on there, it's hard to get all the pieces off from the router doing its job. Uh, make sure if I haven't got them clean that you let me know because that's something that I like to pride myself on. This, I wasn't too concerned because I was gonna be putting it together here today. Um, but I wanna know when something's not right with something that I produce. Oh, ah. About had a man down. I, you just about did. This is literally going together almost like Ikea furniture at this point. It, yeah, it is. It is. Um, but a heck of a lot more sturdy. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, my point is I am not mechanically inclined whatsoever. I, I struggle with Ikea sometimes. And in watching you do this so far, I haven't seen anything that I can't do. Like watching you put it together. So like, I, when you're saying anybody can do this once I send it to them, yeah, probably so. Probably so. I, I mean... Well, and I, let me let me show the front panel again. I'll take it back out. Your door tracks already come installed on your front panel. These are routed out for your glass panels to fit in. Uh, we'll show you how the glass goes in when when we get everything put together because the glass is the last thing we'll do. Um, one of the biggest challenges that you'll probably have is making sure that when you grab a hold of it, you don't want to be squeezing. These, this is left thin. It's not designed to be pried on. Um, you don't want to put a screwdriver in there. You don't want to grab a hold of it with your fingers and squeeze. It's something that you leave to the use for the glass. It's not a hand hold unless you're holding by the outside edge because this material isn't metal. It's not wood. It will bend and it has a breaking point. And now so, we're ready to place the top on. So the glass tracks go on the inside, huh? Yes, yes they do. Um, two reasons. Uh, one, it's much more simple to place a jeweler's lock on, on the glass if it's on the inside because you have the extra added security of the brace on the front okay. to keep that lock from sliding. That makes sense. If you don't have that, you usually have to put the rebrace on there. Mm -hmm. It's a different style of lock. This also allows the glass to go to your sidewalls all the way, and it will prevent the animal from being able to push its way and bend the panel um, if you've got a pusher. And you don't, don't want your animal injured, so okay. it's extra insurance against that in, in your mind. It's that peace of mind. The thing I thought about is it's going to be pretty... And what I mean is when you have the track on the other side, you know, if you have a lip here and then the glass track running, you know, the track here, the glass is here, whether it's glass or plexi, you always get litter down into that track and you always see that from the front. Well, I mean, you may still get a little litter between the, the lip. You're not going to see it because it'll that's be on right. this side. So it's going to keep things looking just cleaner on display. So that's really... Now, the I white like PVC that. is harder to keep looking nice when you use the coconut fiber as you do yeah um, I know <laughs> I, I personally like the white for aesthetic mm -hmm. um, at some point uh, in the near future we will have black as an available option um, for right now we're, we're working with the white where we still have a few minor things that we're working out to improve our speed so that we can keep our lead times down mm -hmm. um, so for right now we're keeping it simple I don't blame you there I just like that design. That's the first thing I noticed. I'm like, wow. All right. So what I'm doing here, this is DAP. It's a clear silicon sealant used for fish tanks and other applications where you're going to have animals in contact with the finished, dried, cured out product. And this is what I use to seal around inside the bottom panel. It keeps th nasty things like urates and pretty much any spilled water when they climb in their water bowl from getting down in here and seeping back out to the outside world. If you're not swift enough to cut a large enough hole, like I wasn't, 
it's really hard to squeeze out and you don't get a very wide bead so you have to go kind of slow. If you do cut a large enough hole, it goes really easy, really quickly. And I just am always a little too cautious. So it's usually better to err on the side of caution than not and end up with a great big blob. But for those of you that have a little more experience in dealing with sealants and tubes, go for what you're comfortable with. Now, I started using the sealant when enclosures that I had purchased didn't have a gasket or a seal of any kind, and it made a, a, an actual difference in how much humidity I was losing in my enclosures. Every gap, you're going to lose a little bit of humidity, and if you heat with natural gas or some other really dry heat source, it's not, it's not good. You don't want to lose that humidity. No one wants an animal that's sick because that costs you money. I don't like spending money. Do you guys like spending money that you don't have to? Not particularly. I didn't figure you did. I'm pretty cheap, so I like to keep as much money as possible. So I'm putting the last little dab in here. And there we are. We're ready to put this on, screw the last panel on, and go get the glass doors and finish this off. So you'll see me again here in another minute when I'm ready to uh, show you the finished product and how to put the doors in. That's a that's probably the most difficult portion of this entire event. So we're ready for the finishing touches, correct? Yes. So in the meantime, some of the things I didn't see is all these panels getting screwed together. Now you did say when you send these out, these will be usually pre-drilled. So yes. really simple for people kind of just put, boom, done, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, seal it, I watched to do that. That was pretty easy to do. And now is kind of the final glass and the lock. Yeah. Correct? So let's go ahead and get to it, finish this cage up, show them how it works. Now I want everyone to understand when I send you a front, uh, when I send you an enclosure, the front panel already has the door tracks on it. This is because I've already pre-fit the glass. I know that a piece of glass cut to the size designed for the enclosure will fit. So that's, that's not an issue. I've already fit it. I know before I put the screws in that it's going to fit. So, piece of glass, this one is 12 and 9 16 high by 32 inches long, and there are two doors for that. This is a six foot long enclosure. You have like a little over four inches in overlap. You grab it, tilt it forward at the top until you go up and you find the track, and it slides right in simple and easy. I will send door pulls with them. You may see a variety of different door pulls over time. If you have one specifically that you like that you've seen on my enclosures, you can let me know. I'll see if I can find it. But I go with whatever's available. I'm not too picky as long as it suits the job. Now you want to make sure when you put this on that your door is closed all the way that you center it well enough up and down that it's not oddball and that you have enough room that you can get a hold of it. And there we have it. Door pull. There's enough room for it to clear the upright brace and it, they will clear one another with the spacing in the track. Very nice. um, I'll go ahead and put the second door in and go ahead and get that latch on and show you how that glass sliding door lock works. Many of you have used them before. Anybody that's worked retail has had to use them on jewelry cases and such things. Um, so often they're usually referred to as a jewelry lock, right? Yeah, they, they, they really are. That's the universal broad accepted name for them. Sometimes getting your second panel in is a little tricky, trickier because the panels are the same size. Um, it's not that it doesn't fit, it's that your fingers have to be a little more nimble perhaps. Uh, no matter how I do this, if I send you a flat packed one, obviously the glass isn't going to be in. If I send it pre-assembled or if you live close enough I'm delivering, 
you're still not going to have the glass in it because it's going to rattle, it can break in transport, it's not safe. You don't want broken product and I don't want your product broken. Nobody likes getting things broken. No. You hear that FedEx? Nobody likes getting things broken. Okay, yeah, that's, sorry. that's for get sure. I that over, break my shit all the time. Yeah, luggage gorillas. <laughs> Caught one throwing my, my package down the stairs once. Really? Yeah, we were home. Thunk, 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 boom. <laughs> Do now, if you have them perfectly vertical, if you're standing taller than it, a lot of times your fingers won't catch it. I tilt mine about four degrees. Okay. It gives you a little more leverage to pull, uh, especially the end that tends to be the easiest to grab. I'm going to slide this down on this table when we're done. This will be the end easiest to grab. If you put your heat on one end or the other, you're usually getting in to deal with the water more than you are the animal in an enclosure like this. Right. Being able to get to the water easiest is a little more. Um, so now we can show you how this lock system works. It's terribly easy. Has adjustable screws. You simply place it over your piece of glass. And I guess I don't have a screwdriver that size We're on hand. always prepared for filming here in the Olympus Red House. Uh, I don't have a screwdriver either. Maybe I can find you. That might I be handy I because I apparently, that's the one tool I forgot. No, it's not. It's on my screw gun. Where did it go? Remember I said I thought I saw one? Now I think I lied to you about that. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. All right. So when you put this on, you're going to want your slide facing forward. Put it over. If you place the little plastic protectors over the end of the screw, when you tighten it down, you're not going to break your glass. Two of these should come with every door lock. I will inspect them as best I can. Sometimes you'll get three. I've had locks come with three before, but I've never had one come with only one yet. So after our little fiasco of not having a screwdriver on hand, we have our door lock on and we're going to go ahead and close our doors to the ends all the way, leaves the exposed amount of door lock. not going anywhere. Um, every enclosure will come with a door lock. Um, it's vital to the safety of your animals. If you've got cats or dogs, you don't want your animal getting out. You don't want either one of them hurt. You don't want children hurt. Uh, even if it's not a, a snake, even if you've got something in there like a Euromastix, you don't want your animal getting hurt, this getting stuck somewhere away from its heat. This will work pretty good for certain monitors too. Uh, tegus, a lot of things that this could be used for. Foam PVC will not melt until, I believe, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So 121 degrees, which is what I've read and been told is the appropriate temperature for even a Euromastix. Yeah. It's safe. It's good. It does not release any gases until it burns. So heating it to that temperature is fine. This material is great for cages. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it is. You, can, you could put silicon... Um, or not silicon, um, resin in the bottom and you could set stones in and you could fill it in with some, with some other substrate for all kinds of desert creatures. You could put water monitors, um, uh, tegus, yeah. uh, uh, today, uh, monitor. today we inherited a tegu at home, nice. so black and white Argentine. So we are going to have to have one of these for it for a while. Now, and ultimately, we won't get the animal in it today because we've got to let that kind of dry in here. Yeah, you want to let that silicon... Uh, we have to add the heat panel, which is going to be easy to do. But my overall first impression here for you guys, and you guys will also see the other one in this video because it's a magic of editing, but uh, <laughs> it's, I really like this cage. It's, it's thick, it's chunky, it feels beefy. It's still a light material. Two people can carry it. The glass is going to give pretty display. It doesn't scratch as easy as plexi. Uh, you know... I, it's always a shatter risk with glass, so don't fall into it. But with this on the outside and the glass panel, the edges being more protected, I, I feel like there's a lot less risk of me breaking that glass on a lot of glass cages. 
So I really, really dig that. The construction is very solid. Obviously, all the screws in there ain't going anywhere. I mean, it's going to hold. I've got no doubts about that. And then, you know, it, it has a nice aesthetic, which is important. You don't think that's important early on, maybe. And most of the time early on, we still got a few things from our early days. You know, you're just getting what you can, and aesthetic isn't as important. There, there comes a time in your reptile hobby or career where you, I think it begins to mean more. It means a lot when you want to be proud. When, you, when you're right. getting to a point with what you're doing, you're learning enough, you begin to be proud of what you've got. Right. And right. you can't be proud of something that when you look at it, you go, God, that's ugly. Right. You just can't. And uniformity, you know, and we had, I mean, as everybody knows, we had a rack company we worked with that made racks and cages for the longest time. Uh, and then just life happened and it didn't work out and it went up. They made a great product, but when they left it, there was this hole in the market. A big hole. You know, and it's been amazing seeing people step up uh, and fill that hole with, with racks from Pride of Texas and now these cages from you guys. And these cages, too, are, are, are they are going to have, they're, they're different for, for sure, but they're going to have a similar enough appearance. I can put stacks of these and I can run everything together and have a nice looking reptile room and be proud just like you're saying. So uh, don't hesitate to hit him up if you need a cage. I think you're going to be very, very happy with it. Obviously, we'll give you a full rundown. You know what? We probably won't even put the animal on this. I'll give you a full rundown a month later or so with the animal in it. Let Kurt talk about his impressions a little bit since he's been able to work with it. But uh, I think it's going to be great. I cannot wait. I'm really excited to get that big boa in there. I think she's going to have the home she deserves. So. Well, I really hope that you all do enjoy it because I enjoy making them. You know, when that hole that you were yeah. talking about came into being, was at a time that we were considering taking the step and upgrading some of our enclosures. Yeah. And instead of being able to pay someone else for a product and just put it up in my home, I had to invest in materials to be able to make enclosures. Wow. And this is something I've not even told you guys yet, but these, this enclosure is the first full enclosure I ever produced. I've never produced another one. Right. I, have, I have worked on others that existed. Yeah. I worked with the material a bit first as a test, but to actually assemble one, this is the first finished screwed together product I've made. And you're seeing what I can do now. Right. I've got a few kinks to work out, uh, time issues, how long it takes me to do it. I don't want people to have a lead time. So I've got a few things I've got to iron out to help with that. So at first, probably gonna have a little bit of slowness. I'm going to iron that out as we go. When I can make this a bigger part of my life day to day, I'll have more time to do that. Absolutely. Um, right now, it still takes a nine to five just like you guys. Oh, I get it, man. So I'm yeah. still busting that yeah. nine to five. That nine to five has got to happen. But the day that I don't need that anymore, I want to be able to yeah. not have 15, 18 week lead times like some of the places that we've had access to. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it, it sucks in the lead times because people, if you know it going in, you know it's one thing. It's like, like well, I know I'm going to need this. I can put the order. I know in two months I'm going to have it. No big deal. Uh, but most people, when they get to that point, they don't realize there's those lead times in the industry. Absolutely. So they're buying something. They're thinking, I need this shit right now. I suppose, yeah, I'll get to you in, in 12 weeks. And they're like, what, the, what am I going to do? You know, how is this going to work? And, uh, I mean, I was there. I've been there before. And then you learn the industry and you can you know, kind And of you learn to plan better for yeah, it. Yeah, you and, and that's part of what we have to do in this hobby is we have to plan for everything. We're planning for inevitabilities that are probably never going to happen, yep. quite frankly. But if we don't, then we're left unprepared. And when you're unprepared, bad things happen to your animals, to you. Yeah. Because you're stressed. And, and nobody needs stress. And you know, the time and amount of money that you have invested in some animals is amazing and yeah it's so yeah this is a really nice product i cannot wait to get get a bow in there and see how it does uh also we'll save this for later just kind of give you guys a teaser we've been talking about some design alterations for your venomous cages you know where you've got some things in mind some ways to do some things that you've been putting together that if it's a, a specific to venomous cage you'll be able to do what yes that you're working on when you fully develop that will make working venomous snakes like <clears throat> easy I, I'm never trying to say that word together with a venomous snake. I should never say venomous and easy, but it's going to be as easy as possible with a venomous snake. With what you're and with. making the process safer. Right. You're dealing yes. with a dangerous creature, not just a potentially dangerous creature, but a truly dangerous, dangerous creature. Yeah. And to make it 
safer to do the hobby is right. what we all want. Oh, well, I agree. Well, not all. There are people who purposely try to make it more difficult. Well, I suppose they do. But they, there, there, are, there are some special, special folks out there. But yes, 95% of venomous keepers and handlers, if you tell them, look, I can make what you do and what your passion is safer for you, they're going to do it. Think about a race car driver. You, know, you ever say, hey, look, race car drivers, we got this new thing that's going to help your neck in a crash, and these new roll bars that are going to, when you do have a crash or something goes wrong, it's going to save your life and keep you. You ever have them guys going, nah, I don't want that shit. Give me no helmet, open cockpit, screw the seat belt, let's roll. You know, you know, you know no. we're like, yeah, let's make our passion safer. It's the same with venomous snakes. If we can keep safer, we certainly want to do that. I know I Well, do. it's better for me and you. Yeah. Well, for you, I don't keep venomous. But it's better for you because... When someone else messes up, eventually they're going to come tell you you can't have yours anymore. Well, it even filters down point. to non venomous. Oh, well, yeah, it certainly I mean, does. Let's, let's be honest. When somebody's, you know, cobra bites them and it makes the news and all of that, and those local communities are there seeing that news story, grandma doesn't understand cobra versus boa constrictor. She and then doesn't. you've got news outlets that um, put a ball python picture for. Burmese and retic and time. time. Yeah. Every time. So definitely a big thing. So really like the cage. Thanks a ton. Kurt, what do you think? I know you're not on mic, but it's gonna be in your house, so you guys um, speak. I think they're really good. I'm excited to get the snakes in there and just get them set up and going. Um, but I, I'm I'm really happy with them. I, I hope Kurt, people... that's excitement. I want you to know that. <laughs> I hope when people see this. What they see is what I see. I see a large, clunky, possibly overbuilt product. Yeah. But. Well, especially going the 19 millimeter. Oh, yeah. yeah the 19 yeah. millimeter is super thick. But here's the thing if, if this is broken, then I, I know Kurt did something to break it on purpose because you're not going to like. No. This is like almost bomb proof, you know? Yeah. I, I would lay on it right now without yeah. fear. Now, we saw a stick Kurt inside it, so. Yeah, well, exactly. There's. I'm pushing yeah. very hard on that. And the biggest fear I have is, is potentially glass. breaking the glass. Yeah. It's not the PVC that I'm worried about. No, it's going to support a lot of weight. And your door tracks, while they're routered thin, that's a 25 millimeter piece I use down there. Yeah. That's extra thick. That's extra sturdy. You're not going to have to worry about weight coming down on the track. It's the glass itself, yeah. glass which is, is cheaper to replace in the long run. Yes. Um, but please don't don't go breaking your your doors. And glass steel, look at it. It appears tempered glass as well, right? This actually is not. not um, no, it's quarter inch. If it was eighth inch or three sixteenths, I would have gone with tempered. Gotcha. But I'm going with quarter, and I know what you're keeping in there. I will have options for tempered glass. Okay. It is it's significantly more expensive. Tempered is. So when you have animals that might like to strike the glass a lot, you might want to consider a tempered. Um, that's still very so solid and sturdy yeah. at a quarter inch. Yeah. It's, it's not a concern. Quarters. See, I also see it. It's got that greenish appearance because it's thick enough. That's what was making me think it might be tempered. The edges are all rounded. They're smoothed over. They've okay. been run through a mitered uh, tool. That's and they probably are, what I'm seeing then. It, it is. It changes the, the look of the edges and everything. And it looks just like a roll up window on your car door. Yeah. Um, that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> All right, anything else you want to add about this cage before we go build the other one? <laughs> uh, no, no, actually, I think that's, uh, that's it for this one. That shows everybody what, what, I'm, what I do. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So you're going to be able to see the cages. Uh, you're going to see the snake in on one of the next videos we do. we got to let Fortuna shed, get this heated up, get it cured, put her in there. I'm really excited to get that big boa a new cage. And we'll show you the one we took her out of when we move her, so you'll get to see the major upgrade that this snake has recently had. Anything else, Kurt? No. Anything else back here? Stacking. Stacking. Yes, they are stackable, correct? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, if you're intending on stacking heavy animals, make sure you order a heavier duty product. That's where I, the 19 comes in. That's where the 19 in. comes in. Uh, I do not make a six-foot enclosure available in 12 millimeter because of the sagging, the, the, the structural integrity of the material is just not there for an animal that might end up weighing 60, 80, or 100 pounds. It's just not. This it is. It's, it's night and day, the difference. So if you want a four foot enclosure, you can lobby between your 12 and 19 millimeter. I might even do 10 millimeter 
on special if someone had something that really doesn't like if they had frogs or something yeah. or geckos that weren't going to have any kind of issue maybe, maybe an arboreal is not going to be touching the ground right i might but still my my suggestion is if you're if you're having a heavier bodied animal go with the 19 millimeter if you're not putting the money into the health of your animal are you really keeping that what why are you buying it yeah and the thing with a 19 millimeter versus a 12 millimeter too like on a bigger cage is the expense yes it's more expensive but it's not vastly more expensive and i promise you i'm not making anything more off of it to speak of no, I'm sure you're not <laughs> it's and it's harder for me to work with yeah. so what i'm telling you think about your animal yeah think about it first i'm not it doesn't matter to me i'll i will make whichever one you want but on a six foot, this is this is the only material I'm using right now. Is is 19. 19. I will have black later. Okay. Um, I have been told by the company um, that makes this PVC, uh, not the company that ships it to me. I know I'm going to send this off to Greg. Greg, you're going to have you have a nice link to look at this video. But what what I'm hearing from the manufacturer of the PVC is that they're actually going to also make it in blue. Oh. Cool. So that's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. They couldn't even give me a time frame. I'll stick to black and white because what I already got. I don't need that yeah. color. But yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't need to look you like a poorly painted them, vehicle. Them to make it purple. They they don't have a purple. They've got red. They got blue. They got yellow, white, black. Yeah, they've got red and they've got blue. They can make purple. They can make purple. That's, that's right. Exactly right. Uh, Kurt would kill me if I bought any cages in purple. He would literally beat the hell out of me. He's small, but I'm telling you, he can still do it, probably. All right, anything else we want to add before we go? No. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.